Who does not know that the kingdom of Saudi Arabia is one of the richest places on the face of this earth? There is money, palaces, and cars that anyone dreams of owning. That is if you are one of the princes of this country. But in the past, the situation was completely different. It was a barren desert with no sign of life inhabited by Bedouin. All their jobs in life were herding camels and sheep and trading. Their lives depended on movement and travel, so it is not surprising that you do not find any traces of civilizations that existed on this barren land. One human being in the seat of an empire, the land of the Arabian Peninsula, in addition to all of this, the tribes were in conflict among themselves. All that governed them was the law of force, with no guarantee for anything except the use of the sword. This was the prevailing custom among these people. Bad customs were widespread in this Bedouin society, and the worship of stones was also prevalent among them. It was also for Christianity. Judaism had some followers, but their number was nothing compared to these people. All of this made it difficult to adapt to this harsh society. Slaves also did not have any rights. Also, if one tribe triumphed over another, this meant death for the men of this tribe and captivity for its women, until the person who aspired to change everything appeared. This man, in the middle of his dark cave in the mountains of Mecca, was seeing the light that would shine for 1,400 years from a distance. He was seeing the change that would bring about in the hearts and minds of these Bedouin and make them create an empire that extended from China in the east to Spain in the west. This man who began his mission alone is now followed by billions and billions of people. Yes, he is the Prophet Muhammad. The beginning of the establishment. Anyone might see that these fools are of no use to them, and he had to travel to great countries at that time, such as Egypt, the Persians, and the Romans, and there he would have followed the civilians of the inhabitants of these empires, and it would have been very easy for him to achieve his goals, but he continued in the desert and established his state from its center in the city and laid a stone for it. The basis was through an agreement between him and the people of the city, known as the Medina newspaper, which organized the transactions between the people of the city and others. It also included a clause that was considered the strongest of all these clauses, as it acknowledged that the Muslims and those who followed them, whether the people of the city or outside them, were one nation. This is the point that I want to talk about. The Prophet Muhammad, although he was not good at reading and writing, was able to raise military and political leaders who established an empire from afar and threatened and eliminated countries such as the Persian Empire and also the Byzantine Empire. All of this is due to the establishment of religious values through the Quran and the Sunnah that made these men truly invincible if we knew the nature of this region and what the Prophet Muhammad did it, so why was he the only one capable of doing that? There is no advantage in it, but he found the way. Let us agree that these Bedouin are irrational to most of them. Even the Prophet himself remained in Mecca for 13 years, and only 70 of these men believed in him. In addition to that, there are few resources available in this place to the point that if you are lost in the desert without water, your chance of survival is almost non-existent, as there are no resources or mines. Also, there is no need to waste time with them. This was the opinion of some people in the Arabs, and this was also the opinion of these Persian and Roman kings. How can a rational person convince himself to stay in this barren desert? Why cling to it? You can also migrate from it to countries that enjoy strong resources, such as Egypt and the Levant. There is no need for you. In this spot, this was the reason why the kings of the great powers at that time refrained from annexing the Arabian Peninsula to their rule. You may see that this land does not have any advantage at all, but a strong advantage, or I consider it strong, is the reluctance of kings and emperors from this spot. It allowed, from a strategic standpoint, the establishment of an empire that was established on the ruins of the Persians and Romans. So it is a strong advantage. The answer is no. I did not mention to you the character of the Arabs and the rating of the Arab tribes. On some of them, especially since their number exceeds 360 tribes. How can you convince anyone that these people will form any country? The answer is by finding something in common among them that brings them together in one word. This thing was religion, yes, religion is the only thing that brought these people together. Through this religion, the Prophet was able Muhammad refined the character of the Arabs and shaped their minds again so it was difficult for anyone to do this other than the Prophet Muhammad, simply because he is a prophet revealed to him with a book that God approved of worship. I want to clarify that during this period, the countries that ruled the world were the Persians, Romans, and Egypt. Eliminating all of these countries using these people makes the Prophet Muhammad different from any other military leader. He was not seeking money or power. He lived in this barren environment in his humble home, lying on his bed. 
A butterfly on earth did not live in palaces luxuriating in bliss and silk, leaving their people to suffer from poverty and hunger like the Persian and Roman kings. Despite their strong armies, abundant in numbers and equipment, the Persian and Roman kings forgot to prepare their people well to face this danger coming from the desert. 